Oh, yes. I believe we're going. Good morning, it is I, your host, Pogo Kiddo, with yet another episode of Redstone Lapis Lazuli. Oh, wait, wait, where am I? There I am, yes, hey. Good morning. I made it yet again. Are we streaming? It looks like we're streaming. Dude, I need to get, I need to unlink that stream element. Somehow it's on my thing and I can't figure out how to get rid of it. I got to get rid of it. Um, but yeah, hey, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to yet another episode. Um, here I am, right? This is my old world. This is, this is the, uh, this is the backup I had of, of the world that I, <laughs> uh, that I accidentally deleted. This is the, this is the, the backup I have here is before I did anything else. Like, oh, before I did anything else uh, in the other, um, before I made the, the, the new world. You know, basically this is, yeah, I didn't make anything <laughs> in the new world yet. This is the backup before I made the new world. So I had to like redo the nether station because it was broken when I, I mean, it wasn't broken but it was overwhelmed by pigment all the time so i had to come back through and i had to redo everything like that i had already done like this is already fixed but i had to refix it and then recarpet it and i didn't want to bother with getting the right colors <laughs> so it looks pretty ugly right it looks like all a riot of colors but i don't care like i just wanted to get it like Get rid of the pigment because they were they're getting they're ridiculous but yeah this is an old version of the map so like this would be the way i would go normally and it's not even there right none of the stuff was here anymore or was there anymore and then the the train ride ride that i would take to go would be here ah and it's not there anymore so yeah this is an old version this is still the old world i haven't uh this this is pretending as if all of like the last few months didn't happen <laughs> which kind of makes sense right because like i didn't want i didn't want to um i wanted to start a new world but with the big mountains and and stuff and i thought that was going to happen with with the caves and clip update one but they split it into two and they made the, the world generation, the part I was excited for, <laughs> they made that part later. <laughs> so I made that whole world on the wrong kind of land. I never, I, I didn't intend, I didn't want to make the, 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 the world on the old kind of land. Cause like I, it's the old land. I, I've already seen it. I already know what it's like. Right. I mean, like, look at it. We can fly through it. It's pretty flat. It doesn't go very high. Like, the, that, you know, the, the world's pretty flat. Of course, when you're on the ground, it's not so flat, but, but even then, it's still pretty flat. It's a flat world. But with the new terrain generation that's going to happen, that should change. So, yeah, this is a mountain. Grandfather Mountain, right? This is, <laughs> which is kind of silly, right? This is, this is not a mountain at all. But in the world of Minecraft, this is a mountain. And um, but that's gonna be changed, right? They're gonna fix it. They're fixing it. They have um, they've made the world taller, and the world will be deeper. All these trees. We're not here. I had to bring them and plant them around the station because otherwise it would be barren. You see how it's a snowy plain? Yeah, there are no trees here. I had to bring them all and plant them all. Hee 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 hee. And it's cool because it makes. Yeah, it's an it's it's cool. It makes a uh, grandmother station really nice. Yeah, I haven't done anything. I'm 
and there's still a horse down there. What are you doing, horse? Yeah. What are you doing down there, horse? It's like, I don't have a way back up. He's like hanging myself. <laughs> That's what you're doing. You're hanging yourself. Jeez. Don't, don't, come on. All right, here. Let me, let me find you a way back up, Mr. Horse. Don't, don't be hanging yourself. That's awful. You're going to make me feel bad. <laughs> Can you come up this way? He's still hanging, kind of like, it looks like. There you go. Now you can get back up if you, want, if you want to. Or is it too small? Let me get rid of some of this stuff. I'm playing Minecraft. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, we kind of knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're playing Minecraft. It's, it's going to happen that you end up playing the game. All right. Oh, no, no, no. I wanted the lead. Did I get the lead? There it is. Okay, Mr. Horse, let's go for a ride. Ta-da! Uh, I need a better place to put you. How about over here? No, the fire. You gotta stand in the fire and die. So let me think. Where else can I put you? How about on the other side of the bridge? There's no fence. I have a fence here. Well, if I'm gonna put him somewhere, I can just put him near near where I live. Ta-da! Oh, it's gonna keep opening it. <laughs> nope, can't do that. All right, here, let me move this over more. Oh, don't, don't walk in the fire. That's what you're gonna do. Fire over here. I don't think it'll burn down the tree. Okay, yes. So, good morning, my my uh my audience of no one. <laughs> it's okay. <clears throat> it's more of a record. It, it it's a it, it keeps a record of of what's going on. I want to keep the, I'm trying to keep the story straight, right? The whole, the whole issue right now is that we're on, we're at, we're on, we're at war basically on multiple levels, but it's like a cold war. Well, for some of us, it's a cold war. And, and the nature of the, of warfare has changed from conventional to hybrid information warfare. And the point is to confuse the, the, the population and at best to get them to do what you want if you're a foreign, and foreign government. Now, Russia can't just go and attack the USA because it, it has military power, but it has no way of... No way of... Oh, I can't talk right now. It has no way of, of um, what am I saying, projecting that power. It cannot project that power. Um, like, it has a bunch of people, it has a bunch of army and, and hardware stuff, but it can't go anywhere. So what it does is it bullies its neighbors, <laughs> you know, with its hardware. But the other way it can attack people 
is through information warfare. Uh, because then you don't need a big fat army to move it around. Like the internet is everywhere. It used to be they tried um, – oh, man. I'm going backwards. But I'm, I'm saying this because this part's relevant right now. Um, but they, they – information warfare, you don't need to mobilize an army to move it around and stuff. It's pretty cheap in comparison to a conventional army. Uh, and the point is just to infiltrate – the the enemy's uh, media uh, and implant ideas. I mean, just to confuse the population, just to mess with their heads. The whole point is to mess with their heads as much as you can, to the level that a state government can do. <laughs> mess with people's heads to the level that a, that a that a national government can do. And Russia has gotten really really good at that. They they've gotten really good at that. Um. And there's a documentary called active measures that will that can teach you about how russia utilized this kind of warfare to to um oh there's a water elf to take over uh georgia and to puppet ukraine they puppeted ukraine there's n i need coal and it worked for a long time, and then the, the the Ukrainians got wise to it, kicked out the puppet, and then the the guy who organized the the puppet, his name was Paul Manafort. He left Ukraine after organizing the puppet for Russia, and then organized the puppet in the United States. And the puppet's name in the United States was Donald Trump. So, but I'm, I'm going, you know, way too far. Anyways, that's information warfare. That's how they use information warfare to attack other nations, Russia, that it can't reach with its military, but, you know, with its cyber army, it can like totally mess with the population. I mean, the United States would kind of do it to other nations, but not to the extent that Russia has done it. Russia has gotten really, really good at it. Um, yeah, so let me show you a map of Eastern Europe. Okay, so here's a map of Eastern Europe. Over here, we have Russia. And right over here, we have Ukraine. You see, they're, they're like right on the border, right? And back in the day, when USSR was around... I think they want they USSR took all these countries. It controlled all these countries, all the way up to like half of Germany. It took half of Germany. So that's what they and then they and then they you know put a the quote quote iron curtain so no one no one on the outside could see what was happening on the inside. That's what they wanted to do. Um, and then in 1990. Uh, Germany, uh, the wall between between East Germany and West or East Berlin and West Berlin fell, and then Germany became reunified. From you know, it used to be under Soviet control, and bit by bit, uh, these countries declared independence from the USSR, which itself dissolved, and Russia became Russia again. <laughs> It was it was Russia before. It was always Russia, and now it's Russia again. But it now has lost like a huge chunk of the countries it used to control. Okay, but bit by bit, Russia is trying to claw back its old countries. So it already did it to Belarus. Remember how I was talking about how they had a they had an election there, and a guy named uh, Nalvani. He won the election. He wanted to go closer to the United, the European Union, but that would hurt Russia. So Russia staged a coup and overthrew the election and took the guy Nalvani and poisoned him. But he didn't die. He, he survived. He went to Germany, got treatment, and then he was going to go back to Belarus, right? Because he's the president. Because he got elected. But when he was flying back. He landed in, in Moscow to go to Belarus, and in Moscow, they arrested him for nothing, and they put him in prison. 
for nothing. They made up a bunch of stuff, and they did a mock trial. But if you watch the American trial of, of Kyle Rittenhouse, you know how finicky just uh, trials can be. You know, <laughs> like if you if you saw the Kyle Rittenhouse uh, trial, then you you know what kind of trial uh, Nalvani had when he landed in Russia. It was the same kind of trial. It's the same thing. The judges already had the the uh, already had the decision in mind and told the jury what to, what kind of uh, uh, <clears throat> what kind of uh, answer to give back. So, anyways, he's in jail now. And Belarus is is under Russian control. <laughs> a long time ago, I think 1937, 1938, Ukraine, you know, was a bunch of Ukrainians who lived there, who spoke Ukrainian. But then, every, you know, this is all under Russian or uh, USSR control, communist control. Stalin had the great idea to to totally change the way that the serfs would produce food. And he had a totally different idea. And so he implemented, by force, this brand new idea. He forced all of the serfs to give up their centuries and centuries of, of agricultural knowledge and do it the way Stalin wanted to do it. The result was failure. <laughs> failure. And the mass starvation. So... What Stalin did was he went into Ukraine and he took all the food out of Ukraine and brought it back to the Russians. <laughs> so people in Ukraine, especially in eastern Ukraine, because close to Russia, they had no food and they died. They just died. That's it. They just died. All their, They had food. It was just taken away by the Russians and sent to Russia. And the Ukrainians died. Millions of them. Like three to four million Ukrainians in eastern Ukraine. So that's this part of Ukraine right here, right? After, after all the Ukrainians died, the Russians moved in. You know, <laughs> that, that strategy works. It worked already. <laughs> that's what the Americans did. The, the, uh, the uh, like, yeah, the, the European Americans did to the Native Americans. Holy shit. Oh no! Ah! <laughs> oh no! Ah! <laughs> Damn! Ah! <laughs> I gotta fix this. Where did that creeper come from? Oh no! All right. And we put stuff away. I fix it. So that's what the that's what the uh, Americans did to the the Native Americans, um, in a to the, when the, when they when the Americans killed all the bison on the plains because that was the food source for for the natives. They they ate by they went the bison. They lived off the bison. The bison were plentiful, right? You know, bison are just being bison. And uh, the Americans are like, oh, look, we can't find these, these Native Americans because they're not like settlers. They don't have a base. They keep moving. <laughs> so, um, oh, man, I, this got blown up. Okay. Let's see. So, how did I do this? That's an activator rail. Okay, so this is a detector rail. This is a turning rail. And then I need. Ta da! <coughs> and then I need a block. So, one, one. Then I need a hook and then some string. What are you doing in here, horse? <laughs> I thought I had you tied up outside.
What happened to your lead? It's right there. Oh, it must have got blown up. The keeper. Okay. Okay, I need a minecart. Do do. Redstone. That got blown up. Oh. <laughs> well, what's the deal, yo? Why don't you work? <laughs> okay, so here. Oh, because this one has to be a powered rail, which I don't have. I have a little bit of gold, but not enough to make the powered rail. I can try to steal a powered rail from somewhere that makes that's not necessary. But then I don't, I don't want to like, like here. This horse is like, hey, what's going on, buddy? What you doing here? <laughs> you need to not be here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see that's working. I forgot the pattern, but it doesn't matter. Oh. All right, works again. Everything's fixed. Where did that keep creeper come from? Did it come from down there? Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah, look, it's an open. This is open. That's why. It's totally open. Everything's lit up. Can't get in, it's too big or too small. It's all lit up. All 
all right. I mean, like, yeah, <laughs> that kind of bothered me that a creeper got in. Because if it, if, oops. how do you get out of here? Yeah, because look at this. <laughs> I don't want to have to remake all this stuff. <laughs> That's annoying. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, what was I saying before I got oh, I got blown up by a creeper? No. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Belarus, Russia. Um, what they were doing. All right. How did I even see that? How did I notice that 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 a creeper was coming to kill me? How did I how did I even see that? I don't know. Um, because I was over. I was seriously like into the map. How did I even notice that? Okay. All right. So Russia starved out. That's right. Russia starved out this half of eastern Ukraine and then moved in their people like the Americans starved out the, the Native Americans by killing all the bison. It's like the same thing. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, so then, so now a bunch of Russian speakers live in eastern Ukraine. All right. Now fast forward. That's from like 1930s, right? Now fast forward to like, uh, what was like the early aughts? So Russia wants has lost control of, of, of all these countries, but wants them back. So how do, so it already has Russian speakers in U, Eastern Ukraine. So what it starts to do is it starts a radio campaign, an information campaign, talking to all the Russian speakers in U, uh, in um, Eastern Ukraine, telling them. That that Ukrainian Ukrainian is bad. It doesn't like the Russian speakers, and that Russian speakers should hang out and be cool with Russia more. And basically, you know, creating conditions to overthrow the country. Then they start putting disinformation and start lying about stuff, <laughs> you know, and just like straight up like telling the people of Eastern Ukraine all these lies, and the Eastern Ukrainian people believe the Russian lies. They just believe it. And then Russia like invaded and took over. Eastern Ukraine, and right now it's occupying. Russia right now is occupying this whole half of Eastern Ukraine. They just took it over. They just took it over. And this right here is called Crimea. And that and and um and Russia took over this part. This you know they took over this part of of the country. Ta da! They just invaded and took over this part of the country. And it's been a, it's been, and the way they did it was, all the the Russian speakers that re, that moved here after in 1930s, after Russia starved out all the native Ukrainians, then the Russian speakers moved in, then their kids' kids, you know, you know, in in the aughts, 2000, got talked to Russia. Russia was talking to them, saying, "We want this country. We want this. We want this." So then Russia invaded with their help that the russian speakers helped the the uh, the uh the russians take over the eastern part of ukraine all right and then and then so belarus already has a puppet uh from russia remember i was telling you about how um how uh lalvani was is the president but he got you know imprisoned by russia okay now there's people fleeing Belarus, right? They're afraid. They want to run away. This little tiny chunk right here, that little chunk right there, that is Russia. Believe it or not, it is Russia. This is Russia, that's Russia, and this little chunk there is Russia. So here's Belarus, here's Russia. People in Be migrants in Belarus aren't trying to go into Poland, aren't trying to go in Ukraine aren't trying to go to Lithuania or Lat Lativa. They they want to go to to um to here, this little chunk of Russia. But they have to go through Poland to do it. So they put a whole so and and the uh Russians know it. They want to cause a problem. 
because Poland is a, a member of NATO, and Russia wants to control Poland too. It used to control Poland, and it wants to control Poland again. <laughs> so Russia is pushing the migrants, the refugees, to this point, exactly this point, because they want to they wanna take over this chunk of land and connect their little chunk of, of territory here with the rest of Russia through Belarus. Do you see? So it's like bit by bit, Russia claws back at the territory. And they don't go by like by years, but by decades and centuries. <laughs> like they've been going after Ukraine forever. I mean, this is this is part of the whole thing, right? The the great Russian bear. Europe fears the Russian bear. All of Europe is afraid of Russia because Russia is just creeping, go, 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 bit by bit by bit to take control of everything, and that and it got as far as th to this point of taking control of every of all of Europe. So that's why people are. That's why the Europeans are afraid of Russia because Russia is super. You know, Russia can and now. People will say it's a declining power, and yeah, it kind of is, right? Because the sanctions that that the West has put on Russia has kind of hurt it. Russia's entire economy is based on oil, so it does not want to switch to green energy. It does not want to switch to green energy. It never wants to go there. In fact. Russia made plans to make global warming happen because then up here, all its land up here in the northern part would be worth a lot of money. All of a sudden, this tundra that they can't use, they will turn it into farmland. That is the plan of Russia. They want to push global warming. They want oil. You have to remember, they are totally opposite, totally opposite of the American ideal. Well, not even the American ideal, but the the idea, the ideals, the ideals of the West, Western ideals, right? And at least for 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 an American, right? For American ideals are truth, justice, and liberty. The truth is that global warming is real. Justice is that we are we 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 take care of the planet and don't just murder all these this life forms for for profit for some corporation. Like, uh, that's, uh, that's, and it would be, and, uh, what freedom. Yeah. And so by preserving the environment, we preserve freedom for everyone. So yeah, we're totally opposite. <laughs> the idea of oligarchy, Russia, right. Cause they want rule by power. That's why they, they go by, by oil. And the, the ideals, not the manifestation, but the ideals of Americans is, is truth, justice, and liberty. These are totally incompatible. They won't work together. <laughs> That's why there's been uh, this long, long, long thing with Russia. Now, Russia is getting ready to um, attack Ukraine in January. And they, are state, they tried to stage a coup. They already tried to stage a coup in Ukraine to overthrow the Ukrainian president. You know, remember Zelensky from, from Trump, the, the guy that Trump extorted? Well, now that Biden is in charge, Biden's like, okay, you're, you're our friend again. We're going to be friends again. So Russia knows this, that they can't just like, you know, they can't count on Trump to, to get rid of Ukraine. So now Russia is trying to like, literally overthrow the government of Ukraine, or if it can't do that, it will invade in January. And it's going to hope that NATO, you know, NATO is the alliance of Europe, of Western Europe and America. So all, like, not these guys, but these guys are all in NATO. They're all, maybe these guys are in NATO, I don't know. But they're all in NATO. And then we get more and more people in NATO which means more and more people are under our alliance, which means if you attack one of them, you're attacking all of us. So if you attack Poland, you attack the United States. So if Russia attacks Poland, it will be the same thing as if Russia attacks California. The same thing. It will be the same thing. That's why everyone's watching what happens here. Because Russia is pushing the migrants to stress out Poland and to cause an incident, to cause some reason to give some pretext for Russia to invade. 
by saying, oh, Poland is mistreating our Russian speakers to save their human rights, we must invade. And then, and then Russia wants to bet that, that NATO won't help Poland. That's, that's what Russia has to calculate. They have to think, will NATO defend Poland? Because, you know, NATO is all of Western Europe and the United States. Will the United States defend Poland? That's Russia's uh, calculation. Now, when Russia had Trump as a puppet, that calculation was easy. They didn't even need to, to, to do this. But now that Biden's in office, it's not so clear anymore. Biden will, 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 will be more of a NATO ally than Trump was. Trump wanted to break up NATO. So... Woo! So this is the end of of season five. I'm gonna make. I thought about making a new world, and then I'm like, I don't know, man. This is pretty cool. What if I just extend this world? That way, I can check out all the biome biome blending, and I'll pretend as if that whole like first half didn't happen. <laughs> Yeah, foreign policy is pretty interesting, right? I mean, maybe it's not so interesting to Americans, but if it's your kids who are going to go off to war, you might be interested. That's what ended the Vietnam War. Right? Americans don't care about foreign policy until it's their kids who are dying. And the way that the American uh, military is structured, it's a bunch of poor and minority kids who are in the military. Because they're the ones who have no other options other than the military, you know, for, for advancement, economic advancement. It's either stay in, in your underdeveloped neighborhood with no economic opportunities or join the military and get a bunch of bonuses if you survive. <laughs> um, so if you're a middle class kid, you don't need those bonuses. You have your, your parents. If you're rich, you don't need those those incentives to join the military. You have your parents. Like you don't need, you know, you have your education paid for. But if you're poor, yeah, you need you need to join the military in order to get the money to go through education and get to buy a house and all the, all that other great stuff. So the way it's structured is, <laughs> no one really, you know, if only poor kids are dying, no one says anything. And that's how Vietnam was. <laughs> but then they started running out of poor kids. So. <laughs> They um they implemented a draft, and what the draft did was it democratized military service. No longer was military service just for poor kids who had no you know, like who had no other options. Now everyone had a stake in the game. Like yeah, you can find ways to get out of it. Like I know Donald Trump had a lot of ways of getting out of his his draft. Um, so it wasn't perfect, but there weren't as many loopholes to get out of it anymore. So, so now middle class kids started dying. And when middle class kids started dying, now the parents started getting involved and figuring out, well, wait a minute, why are we in Vietnam? Why, why are we over there? We should be stopping this thing. And that's when everything started like winding down. It was after the middle class kids. Like Afghanistan went on for 20 years. No one said anything until Joe Biden wanted to leave. <laughs> when Joe Biden wanted to leave, all of a sudden people had opinions about, about Afghanistan. And now here we are like a few months after, we are like, what 10 months after no one talks about afghanistan anymore <laughs> well it's over that's good but no one talked about it until it was over they forgot about it like jeez okay what's this Yeah, I have a bunch of stuff here. Okay. Let's go on a ride. 
Blockchain Station. So I finally saw that movie, um, Django Unchained. I saw it on Netflix. And I got the idea, I got the impression that the Confederacy, the South was just a big open air prison. Like the whole thing was just a prison. Yeah, I like this design better. Well, I'll open like this. I mean, I could make it all fancy and like chop it out. But... So yeah, um, yeah, the ending, the ending of that movie, you can't, you can't destroy Candyland. Candyland is forever. Yeah. Is he wrong? <laughs> like, it's, it's, uh, It's literally built in to the system. It's built into the, the whole world. Like. It's everywhere. Ah, uh, it works. But you have to have eggs. So there needs to be a, uh, someone up here laying eggs to drop in here. Oh, I guess those are. So these guys lay eggs. I get it. These guys lay eggs. The eggs go in here when they get shot out. And every once in a while, the lava will go. It, the lava won't hurt the chickens, but it will um, cook the adults. <laughs> and I guess you get the feathers too. Nice. Hey, this is pretty sweet. Birch forest. So yeah, okay, so from down here, the land doesn't seem very flat, but it is, trust me. <laughs> like from down here, yeah, it looks like, oh, geez. Look how varied it is, but it's not. Look how, I mean, it doesn't go very high. Watch, you shall see. This is the last world, right? Next week. Well, I mean, yeah, next week we're going to, like, I'm going to demonstrate. I was thinking also, the premise of the show is, like, was doomed to fail from the start. <laughs> because... Like, I can, it's sort of like matter and antimatter. 
Like they can't if they touch each other, they annihilate each other. Like I cannot have anyone on this show that disagrees with me. Or not disagrees, but like has has like anti-liberal ideas. Because then I then I like destroy them. Like I can't handle it. I can't I can't I can't do it. Liberal, I mean, like, to be the most generic term, not, not like, to say, like, liberalism is the way to go, but, like. Yeah, the caves are going to be, like, redone, too, so that's going to be nice. There'll be a point to caving instead of just, like, avoiding it. Okay, what else do I got? I mean, like... <laughs> the dress. Do you remember the dress? All right. For, like... This is a fun little thing th that I like to look at. F um, for, um... Because it's just hilarious. Perception. Like, so depending, depending on, I don't know what, right? This dress will look either, either gold and white or black and blue. It's the same picture. It, the picture never changes. The picture never changes. But... To me, all the time, it switches between uh, white and gold and blue and black. It's always switching back and forth. I can't tell the difference. I don't know what color it really is. So I, like, zoomed in on it, right? And I zoomed in on it more. I zoomed in on it and I zoomed in on it more to the to the very very most and I looked at the color picker and the color picker puts it out on the bluish side. So if that's white, it's more on the bluish side. So yeah, the by wavelengths the the dress is is blue. But it switches back and forth for me between white and gold and blue and black. And it's the same dress. It's the same thing. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. It just, my perception of it changes. I don't know what causes it. I don't know if it's, if the surrounding is lighter than it, it, than it changes or if the surrounding is darker than it, than it switches. I don't know. But it's a trippy, trippy artifact of perception. It's weird. So, yeah, look at all this flat land. Like, here, there's a mountain, right? It's it's not very not very mountainy. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, this guy here. Yeah, it's not very mountainy. But but yeah. Uh, 
Yeeha. Well, okay then. What else do I got? Man, I'm pretty slow on this, huh? This is the last thing, I guess. I don't know. So, why haven't I bought a house? <laughs> well, <laughs> the price of houses have gone up. So here's the economic collapse the last time, and then it's been growing up steady, the, the, how, the cost of housing. And then the pandemic hit, right? Here's the pandemic. It shot up. And then, I don't know, it, it dropped out for a second, and then it's increasing even more at an even higher rate, like double the rate it was increasing before. So I didn't, I don't understand what's happening. I don't understand how high, how, Housing prices could increase at such a high rate, but like I, I, you know, it doesn't make sense for me to buy a house as a single person, not married. Like, why would I buy a house? I mean, I guess you know, to 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 get that money back, you know. So I'm not putting it in rent, but then I have to worry about upkeep, maintenance, taxes, um, like. All the other things that come with it, and then I'm tied there. Then I'm stuck there. I can't. I can't. I like. I can't leave. If I get another job somewhere else, I can't. I mean, not that I'm gonna, but like, <laughs> or if I need, like, if I, if some family emergency or whatever, like, I can't just up and leave. Or if I, if I get an opportunity to live in another country, I can't just up and leave. Like, I own a house. It's way harder to get rid of a house than it is to leave an apartment. No, oh, didn't make it. Ah. <laughs> uh, how do you get out of here? Okay. Yeah, this was my first little attempt at making a, a an automatic system. The water would come down, collect all the crops into this hopper system. It'd go into this box, and then a cart would load up and then bring it up to my base up there. And I thought, oh, man, that was so awesome <laughs> to do that. <laughs> and then, yeah, this was, this used to be the, the end of my base. And then I expanded a little bit because I was out of room. And then I made this the of my base. And then the view distance used to be so short that I couldn't see very far. Like, I had to, like, yeah, I couldn't. So it was, like, fog, like, right where that, you know. So it was, it was the scary unknown. I didn't go very far from my base. And then, yeah, sure, now with RTX, I can see like way, way far away. Like, look at that. It's amazing how far I can see now. And the RTX has improved a lot. Like, I can't believe how good they've gotten it. Like, n there's no more blooming. There's no more um, tracers. Well, there might be a little bit of tracers, but not bad. Not nearly as bad as it was before. Yeah, the RTX has really, really improved. Looking forward to the update, to see all the new landscape. That's what it's all about, because this land is old and boring and flat. I want to see variation. All right, well, hey, that'll do it for me. Oh, wait, yeah, let me show you this other part.
This last little part. So the bottom of the world is that food. Yeah, this is an old world, dude. I haven't done anything here. Is literally Y level zero. Which is the middle number. Get out of here. Oh, hey. <laughs> Hello, lava. Redstone. Six, five. Oh, right there. See? Hey, more diamonds. Nice. Look at diamonds were there at my home all along. <laughs> They're always there. Waiting for me to find them. But look, this is the bottom of the world. I can't go any lower. But next week, that will change. So yeah, I can't go any lower. See, this is bedrock. It does not break. It does not yield. <laughs> It's going to get replaced <laughs> next uh, patch. So that all this stuff is going to ch change. We're going to um, be able to dig under here again. And have new adventures and new things to talk about. New stimuli, new content. I just want to make this as a reference. You see it, you see it is all a... Uh, it is all this. Ah. Uh. Anyways, so bedrock, you can't you can't do anything with it. But in a week well on the thirtieth, it will be transformed.
Okay. So we're going to see all the stuff change. In a week, it all changes. I mean, not only here, but also, like, I guess with the Trump circle, it's starting to collapse. They're starting to turn on each other and, like, give up the, the conspiracy. So, like, maybe big things are in store. Who knows? I, maybe next year is, like, a, is a transformative year. I don't know. Things look pretty crazy right now. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we're going to see. Okay. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> Until next time, America. Peace. Bogokiro out. Stop.